Welcome to this episode of the Wireless Weekly, episode 42. This show is brought to you by Audible.com. Get your free audiobook at audibletrial.com forward slash lazy. Also by dime.com. Uptime is the bottom line. Get 30% off off checkout at dime.com slash podcast30. That's podcast30. This is the show where we talk about mobile tech news, updates, and innovations. I'm your host, Tony Hannity's, and I have here with me this evening Mr. Radford Castro. Hey. And last but not least, Mr. Sean Wilburn. Hey, how you doing? Good, man. How are you, uh, how are you gentlemen, doing this evening? Good. Very, very good. Very good. I'm well, doing well, man. Getting some racing in, finally, in Gran Turismo again. Feeling good. So, yeah, let my wings spread. Having fun. What are you driving? <laughs> Uh, lately, I've been driving a 1969 Camaro. Okay. <laughs> oh, that thing is such a beautiful car. <laughs> Too bad I don't have a real one. Well, if any of you out there, <laughs> if any of you out there have a favorite Gran Turismo car that you like to drive a lot, let us know. Give us a phone call at 707-722-5299. Or if you have any comments regarding the topics that we're going to talk about tonight, you can also email us at comments at lazytechguys.com. Right now, we are live at youtube.com slash lazytechguys. TV. We're going to do a couple of announcements right now. And the first one is going to be for our, ex- uh, our giveaway right now, which is for the official Android baseball hat by Google. And that's the one I'm holding right there. And, you look uh, so happy with that hat, Tony. Can I say? Yeah. I, you know what? I'm kind of sad to let it go because I, I, would, I would totally wear that hat. You know, But um, in lieu of having that hat, I also got myself a belt, a belt buckle. So. But, um, yeah, all you have to do to, to win this hat <laughs> is to make a caption for Miss Beyonce Knowles right there, Jay-Z's uh, bride. So, yeah, if you can think of a funny caption for her. I'm on it right now. Which was taken a split second in between her performance at the Super Bowl a couple of weeks ago, then uh, in, in, we think it's the best one. Uh, you win. Also, things that are going to help you win, uh, like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, uh, even follow us on Google+. Plus. That can help, too. And uh, last but not least, um, this giveaway is only available to those who reside here in the United States. So sorry if you live outside, but that is how it is right now. And the other announcement that we wanted to bring up for you guys is that our very own Sean Wilburn is going to be starting his own show um, in the next, maybe in the next month or so. But we obviously need content, and we need people that we would like to talk to. So, Sean, I'm going to uh, turn the spotlight over to you. If you can give a quick one to two minute um, synopsis as to what the LTG radio show is going to be all about. All right. So what I'm looking to do is have a see this is serious voice for once for once on this show. All right. So what I'm looking to do here is have a independent radio show that that features really artists who are unsigned or independent who aren't on too big labels and just really want to get a little exposure and. Uh, provide to people, really to people listening, a chance to hear music that they don't get a chance to hear every day. That way it's just something outside the normal standard radio songs or the standard, I guess, since I'm looking at it, Beyonce's. So <laughs> I'm still looking at that very humorous picture that you put up, by the way. That was fantastic. Um, but yeah, so it's an opportunity to get... Um, well, if you're an unsigned artist or you want to get your music exposed, I'm looking to get as much content out there. It doesn't matter the genre. I'm looking for all genres of music, including like all the raps, R&Bs, jazzes, pops, uh, new age, country, bluegrass. I'm looking for things Mumford and Sons like stuff. I'm looking for any and everything that people are doing, just what you are out there doing with your music and how you're expressing yourself. And I want to be able to showcase it on our show. So um, if you can, send the submissions over to our, our way. Um, and uh, we probably will have a sub- e- another email address going to be like submit at lazytechguys.com. I'm sure the guy with the green ears, I'm going to talk to him about that, and he'll have a, probably have an email set up there real soon. Um, but um, we're going to have that going on. And, yeah, if you're an artist, please get it on the show. We'll, I'll showcase it, tell about any future shows you may be doing. Um, if you have an album coming out, we'll promote it. Well, not really promote it, but we'll talk about it and get people just let them know where to find it. So if you can, send it our way. LTG Radio is going to begin very soon, so hurry up and get on it. Excellent. Mm-hmm. 
Well, I for one am very excited for that. So thank you very much for uh, heading that up, Sean. Let's go ahead and start talking about our top mobile headlines. Uh, HTC made a, made a big announcement about the HTC One. Uh, LG finally announced the official specs and release for the LG Optimus G Pro. NVIDIA announced a new Tegra chip. Uh, Ubuntu has announced a number of things, tablet support and a re developer release uh, coming in the uh, next week. And also, last but not least of the headlines, GameStick, uh, which is an Android-based Kickstarter project that uh, was you know, a competitor to um, Ouya, is now available for pre-order. So before we get in, uh, involved with that, let's go ahead and thank our first sponsor, which is Audible.com. Uh, for you listeners and viewers of the Wireless Weekly, Audible is offering you guys a free audiobook with a free 30-day trial to give you the opportunity to check out their service. They have over 100,000 books on the service, so you'll definitely find something that you like. Um, you know, things from Harry Potter to Fifty Shades of Grey to, I don't know, Hunger Games. And, uh, you know, it, it, even you know, nonfiction like the, the infamous uh, Steve Jobs uh, book uh, all the way to uh, the Google um, in the Plex book. So it works on multiple devices like your computer, mobile devices like Android, iOS, and even Windows Phone. So... To get your free book today, all you have to do is go to audibletrial.com forward slash lazy. Again, that's audibletrial.com uh, forward slash lazy. And we thank them for being sponsors of the Wireless Weekly. So let's go ahead and double back and we can get my computer on the right screen here. HTC finally rocked the world with a phone that they really needed to launch, which was the HTC One. Now, Sean, before you make jokes about the name, this is the one. I mean, this is the... <laughs> This, this is, is the one. <laughs> this is the phone. Who's Morpheus? Where's Trinity? So I was thinking of Jet Li's the well, one as well too. But in all reality, I mean, this phone is going to hopefully bring them from their financial grave almost that they're in um, to you know, maybe maybe a company that people are starting to take notice of um, in a positive light. Uh, we heard a lot of you know speculation as to what this phone is going to have. And, um, you know, from what I can tell for, from the people that were there that actually had a chance to look at the phone, they were very, very impressed with it. Uh, let's talk about the specs real quick. We've got a, um, we've got a 4.7 inch full HD 1080p display. Um, it is a metal aluminum chassis or aluminum chassis for those in the United States. Uh, it's an aluminum chassis. Um, it has a two megapixel front shooter. The rear camera we'll talk about in length, which is really interesting. Um, it has a new uh, HTC Blink feed, which is kind of embedded with HTC Sense 5. HTC Boom Sound, which delivers a revamped mobile experience. So it is Beats, <laughs> it is beats but supposedly it's much, much better than the existing you know, Beats audio that, that's integrated into the HTC One X Plus and things of that nature. Um, right out of the gate, it looks like a beautiful phone. Uh, some of HTC phones, the camera is, um, what's the opposite of recessed? It's uh, concave or convex. Yeah, it's coming out of the back of the phone. This one convex. is like, yeah, this one is... Uh, or it, embossed, or convex. Or, and it, doesn't it protrude? And, it's not yeah. sticking out. That's the word I'm looking for. Thank oh, so you. it's pretty seamless then. Yeah. yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. All right, and uh, if you know the word, call us at number. <laughs> <laughs> this is why my mother told me to do vocab. I never did, so sorry. Um, and, uh, yeah, the, the one big thing is that, you know, HTC, at least in Android, they're really trying to set themselves apart from Samsung because they have to. They really have to. With, uh, with HTC Sense 5, it's very Windows Phone 8-like. You have these live tiles that get information from, like, AOL stations, ESPN, and it just kind of changes uh, like a live tile would with a Windows Phone. So that's actually pretty inv um, innovative, at least on the Android side. Sure, it's a copy, but, you know, it, it looks really, really cool. Um, HTC Zoe allows you to automatically shoot up to 20 video, uh, up to 20 photos in a three-second video, kind of creating a live, uh, live set of uh, different pictures. Um, you've got a whole new uh, sling of apps that have been updated from HTC. And, uh, like I said, their surround sound is... Um, it, it, the, the boom sound, it's got dual front stereo speakers, which is 
a little different. On phones, we've never really seen front stereo speakers. It's usually, usually on the back or on 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 the uh, on the bottom of the phone. But the one thing that really like I would not impress so much, but really got a lot of people questioning is what's this four megapixel camera that they're talking about? Because we all, you know, at least the consumers, they want to hear better is more, and HTC came out with a four megapixel camera. But um, what makes a difference is how the actual lenses are combined with um, with the technology that is behind the camera. So um, I don't know if either of you two uh, read up on it a little bit more, but I'm basically just going to read it almost verbatim um, because um, it's the best way to explain it. The breakthrough of the HTC Ultra, Picture ca Ultra Pixel Camera redefines how people capture... Okay, blah, 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 blah. Um, <laughs> it's, um, so the Ultra Picture ga gathers up 300% more light than the traditional smartphone camera sensors. So okay. uh, compared to like a 13 megapixel camera that you'll get with uh, one of the newer Samsung devices or one of the newer uh, LG devices that we're about to talk about, this is supposed to be crisper um, with um, with with this type of technology behind it. it. It's going to be, you know, I wouldn't say DSR, DL, the uh, SLR level, but it's definitely going to be amongst the top level of uh, camera qualities for a smartphone. So, from what I was reading, from what I've seen with some of the um, some of the interviews and some of the hands-on from different sites that were at either the London or the H um, or the New York event, they liked it. They liked this uh, phone a lot. Do either of you guys have any uh, comments or anything right. that you were hoping to see? Can I throw something in there? Go okay, right so I really, really wanted to ridicule this phone because when I looked at the title, I was like, wait, isn't that the name of the last one? And then I looked at the video that they had with it, and I was like, actually, that's pretty dang cool. So you're right. They did definitely went with a, a Windows kind of uh, touch to it, but the tiles are def or, and the, the tiles are already sized a certain way. Now, the boom sound, I guess the bigger thing about the boom sound as I was reading into it was the fact that they have stereo speakers, and they say it gets really loud. Like, they... I guess they were saying it's several decibels louder than your standard Galaxy S like speakerphone, which means that you could literally use this as like a small boom box without a whole lot of bass. You can definitely annoy the person on the BART train next to you. There's no question it absolutely will happen with this phone. So honestly, I like the look of this. I like the style of it. I like the way it seems to have a nice clean look to this thing. So when this phone officially gets released and I'm ready for my next getting my next phone. From what I'm seeing so far, this definitely looks like one I'd be interested in. So before I really kill it too much, Tony. And yes, you're right. I actually do think this is the right step for HDC for once. See, I can't ridicule them in as much anymore. As no, I know much. I was so uh, <laughs> I was on WP Central and I was uh, I was reading an article and they're saying, you know, would would you as a Windows phone user, you know, would you want HDC to build a phone like this um, for Windows phone? And mm -hmm. yeah, you know, a lot of people want you know the, um, the it's a beautiful you know the, the the body of itself is is really gorgeous you know the hardware behind it is really awesome, but again, rad. Correct me if I'm wrong. The actual software doesn't allow for like HD displays right now. Correct. And things so right things now like it's that. Twenty P. So that so makes me like wonder. It's playing catch up a little bit, but at least. Yeah. It's uh, it's funny because uh, if you remember when we had talked about this in the previous podcast or in another episode, uh, uh, HTC was working with Microsoft to create some kind of super phone, right? Right. But then they, they just said, well, we want to create a high-spec phone. The really weird thing about it is like you brought up earlier is the fact that they're boasting a, uh, a 4.0 megapixel camera, right? But here's the thing, though, uh, and I take this, I, um, I kind of... It's almost like this weird thing because, like, they're pushing all of this stuff out, right, to say we have all these nice, you know, we're doing 1080p and things like that. They also had their, um, they also actually had HTC's director of special projects, Simon Whitehorn, who said that we know that the industry essentially has been shipping this big fat lie. And he's actually referring to how the megapixels are not really, uh, you know, as, as advertised when you use it. So when we see things like 8 megapixel across the board on a lot of these Android, Windows Phone, or even iOS, it's not really 8 megapixel or like a real, uh, 
what you call it, uh, a real way to explain that an image sensor at that level really makes a better picture. So it, it's kind of, it's really weird to see this message because, you know, they told Microsoft, hey, we're going to, um, you know, we can't do this. We don't care about specs. And now they're just saying, you know, we, actually, we don't really care about specs. What really matters is this. So it's always sending, like, this weird mixed message. And, um, but there's one thing that you can't doubt about that is that uh, this is a very beautiful phone. And just mm -hmm. looking at it, uh, it, it looks like they're really going out in all the stops and trying to, you know, I guess uh, reestablish or recharge their uh, the HTC fans to look forward to something like this. So um, they have to. Yeah, I mean, no, you, were, you were talking about how they were kind of in the red, and uh, so I was going through their financials as uh, as you were kind of explaining what about the phone, because <laughs> you know me, <laughs> and it's it's funny that uh, they're actually doing something positive, but they had a bleak outlook because of the fact that a lot of their phones are still having issues. Like we were having that podcast with with Victor, right, and we were talking about HTC's quality and their support, and how it plays a very large part in that. So I'm hoping that this phone. You know, uh, being that it's this so-called super phone, will you know be reliable and be able to meet those expectations. Um, yeah, it's interesting. I mean, the, I mean that that quote that really sticks out. We know that the industry essentially has been shipping this big fat lie. It's huge, and it's basically saying, you know what? Forget the eight megapixel stuff. We're going in this direction, and we're going to educate our people, which is mm -hmm. crazy. Yeah. So I mean, do you think there's a difference then between having a 720p and a 1080p display? Do you think people can see the difference of that? I think it depends on what content is actually being displayed on there too, you know? Because you have mm -hmm. a 1080p PS3, but the games aren't 1080p. They're 720. Correct, you won't, right. you won't but, know the difference. The, but Correct. the bigger difference you'd see there would be the frames per second, which I'm sure the smoother the, the action and the, um, the animations look on the phone, that will probably make the bigger difference when people are actually playing with it. Because they're like, wow, that's really smooth. That's really That people notice before they'll notice, oh, that screen is slightly bigger. Yeah. There's a couple more pictures. Yeah. <laughs> I completely agree. Yeah, yeah. And that's the same for like the PS3 and Xbox. Because most games on those things are 720, but if they run smooth, that's all people care about. Mm -hmm. Yep. So that's my point. If it runs smooth on 720, then I don't think the 1080, they're gonna see that much of a difference to really, really want to bump it up. Yeah, which is so weird because like uh, I wish H HTC came out with this and a Windows phone to kind of diversify their. You know yeah. their 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 portfolio. Well, remember they were talking about the Zenith. Remember yeah. that you right. you you brought that up. I was kind of mm -hmm. hoping that we would get a, a twofer. You know. Yes. You know, yeah. But yeah. Well, um, they know the Android operating system well, so that's granted. You know, they they know it well. They they spent a lot of time on on this new uh, on this new uh, on the Blink feed and HTC mm -hmm. Zoe and Boom Sound and all that good stuff. Yeah. And uh, you know, I got a chance to take a look at it, uh, and they were comparing it to other. You know, you're comparing to the iPhone 5 and all this other stuff. So, um, but, uh, you know, I would really like to get a chance to look at it. I mean, you guys are completely right. You know, uh, it's really hard to say unless, it's, I mean, when you see something smooth, it really doesn't matter at that point what kind of resolutions it's at. But uh, I think probably the one thing I probably might be curious about is uh, considering the fact that it's a, you know, a, 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 um, I don't want to say a weaker megapixel or whatnot, uh, but the image, how the image would display on that, 1080p display would probably be probably the standout. So, well, if I I went to Fandroid and Android Central, and both editors took video and picture. And from what I saw, I mean, they weren't the best examples, unfortunately, because of the venue that they were in. It was just like low light, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, I I think some of the other people that were able to you know, tested beforehand and tested in real-world situations, those people said, oh, yeah, this is actually a, a much more viable technology, and it's uh, it, it's a much better quality of, uh, of a picture. Um, now, one thing that's... supposed to that they were going to... that this also does low-light, too, doesn't it? I mean, it's it's not exactly peer view, but, I mean, it's supposed to be close to that, right? It's supposed to be, but I guess when it's really low-light, because it was really dim where they were at. Okay. Um, is there an ISO performance on the spec sheet, or... You know what? Um, I don't know. Maybe Mel put it on the spec sheet, but I didn't check. But mm -hmm. if you get HDC uh, slash support, I should have it. Um, speaking of support, also with carriers, uh, United States carriers, not every United States Big Four is going to take it. Uh, T-Mobile, AT&T, and Sprint 
um, are going to have it at, and Best Buy in the United States and Canada as well as Rogers, Bell, uh, Mobility, Telus, and Virgin Mobile Canada. Uh, not Big Red, not Verizon. No. Oh well. But um, in <laughs> Europe, a ton of uh, uh, a ton of uh, carriers in Europe. And so what? I, uh, my next point is you can pre-order it now. And according to HTC's uh, Twitter feed, people are lining up for it already to pre-order. Or at least today, earlier today, when <laughs> it was announced at their respective stores, wherever, wherever they might line them up. So. <laughs> did, they, so did they tell everybody, all right, everybody, if you want to pre-order, stand here and wait an hour. So we got three people to line. Print it. <laughs> Print it. <laughs> All right. So the next one is a phone that we're fairly um, familiar with. This is called the LG Optimus G Pro. I need to uh, put that in there. But this is the G Pro, and this was actually <laughs> finally um, a G Pro. Uh, G finally Pro. Uh, released. Damn you, Jay. And, uh, <laughs> All right. It was finally released in South Korea. Now, initially, it was going to be released first in Japan, which I still think it's released there first, but um, in uh, South Korea, it's going to be in there. So, I mean, the specs are pretty much the same as we've reported before. Uh, it's going to come in black and also in white. Um, it, it, it is well as a 1080p display, 5.5, uh, 5 3,000 milliamp battery, um, Android 4.1 Jelly Bean, and uh, yeah, it doesn't really vary too much from the um, from the Japanese version, and so that's does pretty it much with, it. Does it come with cherries? It does come with uh, on-screen cherries. <laughs> Can't go wrong. It does that. come with on-screen cherries. You know what? Cherries. If you want to think about cherries, think of the uh, <laughs> oh god, the witches of Eastwick. <laughs> <laughs> Talking about a terrible scene with cherries. <laughs> <laughs> if you've seen that movie, you'll know. <laughs> Awful <Okay>. movie. <laughs> Sorry, is this Maybe, what I think well, then, I, then I will not see it. Oh, come on. Uh, it okay, fine. I'm, no, don't, fine. don't watch the movie. I'm joking. It's not really good. All right. Now, uh, another big announcement that was made today by uh, chip maker NVIDIA is the Tegra 4i. Now, this is built. This is a new chip that was uh, with built-in LTE, and uh, they also have a demo kind of uh, su a support model called Phoenix. And uh, Rad, did you get a chance to take a look at this a little bit more? Yes. Uh, in fact, uh, we we saw a predecessor, or somewhat a predecessor of it, at CES. And so, it, when Invi Nvidia unveiled its um, next generation processor, the Tegra Four, and we're not talking about the Four I yet, it was basically about six times the graphics of the Tegra Three. So, uh, when the company was hoping for a new standard in the mobile processing um, space, they were hoping to capitalize on the market for something more cost effective for devices for OEMs across the board, and um, now with today's introduction of the Tegra 4i, uh, NVIDIA is pretty much targeting the growing array of about 1080p smartphones and offering direct competition to Qualcomm's Snapdragon S800 processor. Um, the Tegra 4i kind of sports the same compact 28 nanometer process of the Tegra 4, and NVIDIA's signature quad core, uh, which they say is about the 4 plus 1 battery saving core design, which they kind of combine all this stuff into an SOC, uh, it will also be LTE capable and a limiting factor of the Tegra 3 which was basically, you know, uh, non-LTE, this new one is basically going to be pushing 2.3 gigahertz on an ARM A9. And with about 60 custom GPU cores, it's about 12, uh, 12 uh, roughly 12 times less than the uh, Tegra 4 in price, but five times as many as the Tegra 3. So it has, it's like in that, that strange range where it's a little bit faster, it's faster than the Tegra 3, but slightly slower than the, te than the tablet version of the Tegra 4. So NVIDIA is basically touting the Tegra 4i about having a you know um, efficient design, which they claim is half the size of the Snapdragon S800. So that's a huge, that's a huge um, uh, difference in terms of what OEMs can do with that kind of uh, uh, with, with that kind of processor. And you know, space is like very very important real estate in the world of smartphones. Mm -hmm. So uh, to demonstrate the performance and the efficiency of the Tegra 4 uh, of the Tegra 4i, NVIDIA was showing off, like you said earlier, the Phoenix, which is the new reference design, and it features a, a 5-inch 1080p display and an 8mm thin design. Uh, roughly about the same thing as Apple iPhone 5, minus, of course, the 5-inch stuff. Uh, but NVIDIA has yet to kind of jump into the business of creating its own smartphones, which we've seen with what uh, the project uh, Shield, right? So right. Phoenix, uh, I think, is intended to serve as a starting point. For the other brands to start, of course, this is just announced just now. But uh, so um, it'll be yeah, very just a reference. Yeah, just a reference phone. Yes, yes. Yeah. 
And so um, right now we're going to probably see a little bit more uh, of this reference from in MemWC next week, along with probably some more announcements from Qualcomm following that. But yeah, it's very interesting. It's going to be mm -hmm. a very, very interesting battle. In the, That's uh, fast. Yeah. Tegra 4 was announced last month. You guys yes. were there. It was, we were there. The I was actually talking to the guy about Tegra 4, and I was asking one of their um, representatives if there's going to be a mobile version of the Tegra 4. A mobile, mobile version, what I'm talking about is the smartphone. And they said, well, right now we have things in the plans, but we can't talk about that right now. We'll announce in the future, which they just did. So, <laughs> pretty cool. That's very according, cool. according to this uh, Engadget article, um, NVIDIA said that they would design one mobile processor per year. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> it's not faster than that. <laughs> I think, it, yeah, yeah. I, I don't know if it's one of those situations where when they were designing the Tegra 4, they forgot about something or they didn't really think that it was like important. And then when all this stuff came out from CES or, you know, like uh, much better screens, a lot more phones that were LTE, they're, they realized like, well, we missed a huge, a huge portion of the market that we could really be in. And, we we really need to develop a much better processor for our potential customers. So, well, uh, yeah, dude, I I think of this almost as similar as like the war economy. Like you know, there's always manufacturers really? trying to make better guns and things like that. But mm -hmm. you have these, you know, you have like Nvidia and ATI. When someone makes a faster, you know, game card, they're going to create a faster video card. One's going to create faster and faster and faster. And now we're starting to see this in the mobile front, where Qualcomm and Nvidia are going through that same war. So um, it's interesting, and I've been following this because uh, OEMs, you know, are very, very uh, strict about how much they spend and how much space they have on the designs of their smartphones. So, uh, and but I mean, the end result really it's going to come down to is the consumer going to like it or not? And you know, uh, Nvidia and those guys, they don't really. They just want to say, oh man, we really love this phone, and guess what's in it? Nvidia <laughs> Trigger Four processors, mm -hmm. and so. That kind of thing is a huge selling point, and they want uh, to be a, they want to be uh, mentioned in the best smartphones. Kind of like when you look at a game and it's run by you know uh, they're run by the Epic Engine or whatnot. So uh, yeah, it's it's interesting war, but uh, fascinates me. Very cool. When you buy computers, you have at least with Windows, obviously, you have all these little stickers that come even with the box items that say mm -hmm. Intel inside Windows mm -hmm. Seven Premier HP experience. I'm looking on the back of my phone, and it says nothing about you know Tegra or anything like that. Right. Do you think eventually these companies that are bu building these much better processors are going to want some notoriety and have that kind of sticker on the back of mobile devices? You know, it's interesting you say that. Um, it's really hard to tell because I'm such a numbers guy. I wish that I knew what people really cared about what logos sit on there. Like, it's not really anyone cares about a Verizon or Sprint or T-Mobile logo, which they plaster all over anything, right? They don't but, care. But yeah. <laughs> they don't care. People don't yeah. care. Yeah, yeah. I think in the smartphone world, uh, um, the safe assumption is that they, they don't. But uh, if you go to their websites, they mention them all the time. You know what I mean? So... Uh, I think well, yeah, just through the press, I think yeah. that really matters. Yeah, when you when you go to Best Buy, they have it on the on the you know price sheet. Like this phone is this this has powered by Beats Audio, has this ARM well, processor and this and that. And it's like, oh, should I get this one? <laughs> well, it's just that they're trying to uh, they're trying to uh, 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 what's the word for it? They're trying to appease as many different customers and many different people as possible, including tech heads and non tech heads. So they put the bullet points on there to make it easy for people to remember this is what makes this one better than this one or well, this is what makes it different. Plus, I'll, just so you know, a lot of times those bullet points are for the salespeople. They're not really for the customers. They're for the salespeople to sit there and go, yeah, this one has the Tegra 4 processor. This, this, <laughs> this one only has the Tegra 3 processor. That's, that's a true... I look that, at them. <laughs> yeah, so, I, I that, is a, that is a true... That, it's just... In a grand scheme of things, it's going to come down to how well the things run on that device. Um, Rad, from what you said a minute ago, they said that they had things in the works that they didn't want to talk about. And Tony, you were assuming that they were trying to, uh, they saw stuff at CES that didn't hit a market. I think it's more of a, before CES, they talked to some of their OEM manufacturers who just had a very specific need. And they were like, well, the Tegra Ford's going to cover a lot of these needs, but we do have a segment of population we don't want to leave untouched. So let's just create this other one that has a very particular need. And they'll probably run them both kind of side by side for a short moment, then phase out the four. They come up with the whatever the new one will be on top of it itself. So, and then they can get on their one year schedule that they promised us. 
Yeah, I, I think, you know, honestly, I think it's a competition thing because mm -hmm. if if the S800 processor is starting to get more and more OEMs, that's one less, like, million to billion dollar contract for, for NVIDIA to sign, you know what I mean? And uh, if, like, HTC, Samsung said, hey, we want to do this on the phone, we only have this much space, and NVIDIA says, we got you, and it's going to be this much. I mean, that's a huge yeah. opportunity. And, you know they I mean? have, and they do have to keep up with the manufacturers making they phones. And considering how fast Samsung and HTC are guys exactly. are releasing phones, they have to yep. say, well, Samsung, we got a new phone. We want to come up with a new phone this March. We want to come up with a new phone this September. Can you yep. help us? And they were like saying, yes, we'll come up with one yep. processor for this period. We'll come yep. up with another processor for this period. Yeah, it makes yep. sense. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. yeah, cool. You know what else makes sense? What? Ubuntu for tablets. Yeah, <laughs> baby. That's Ubuntu my segment. Looks, that thing looks pretty sick, though. I ain't going to lie. The entire UI does look really good when I was looking at the video for this one, too, Tony. So if you haven't checked out Ubuntu, go to Ubuntu.com. But also, if you go to LazyTechGuys.com, we have a number of Ubuntu videos that are fairly short. They're like maybe five, seven minutes long. And <laughs> the, aside from the guy in his uh, taco chest hair, um, <laughs> he you know it, <laughs> it's very it's very in depth. It's very easy to understand. You don't you don't have to be a tech head. Mm -hmm. And um, essentially, what um, what was funny was last night we had mentioned that Ubuntu on their website had a countdown clock, and they you know it was about the same time that HTC was having their event. So a lot of rumors were spreading around saying, "Oh, HTC is going to announce an Ubuntu uh, you know tablet." And, you know, Rad, you said, you know, they could probably do it. They could probably be the one carry or the one OEM that pulls it off. And, well, they didn't. But that's not a bad thing. I mean, uh, <laughs> you know, they, they need to focus on what they know best, and they know best their own stuff in Android right now. Um, and so what Ubuntu is doing is they're now supplying support for tablets, and they're going to support the Nexus 10 later on this week and the Nexus 7 um, sometime next week. And um, this is going to be... Uh, a very interesting kind of experience uh, for those that are looking for kind of a newer operating system that is kind of Android-like, you know. Um, it is open source, um, but this new support is going to um, this new support will be between any device that is between six to twenty inches, and if you have a twenty-inch tablet, it's a TV. It's not a tablet anymore. Um, <laughs> and you can start downloading it uh, when it becomes available at developer.ubuntu.com. Um, on Thursday, it's going to support secure multi-user. So I know, like Vic, for example, he's been looking for multi-user support on Android for quite some time, and I think it's available on Jelly Bean 4.1.2 or something like that. But in any case, it's it's not out of the uh, not out of the box. And then with with this one with Ubuntu, it should be for for tablets. Uh, it's also going to have a voice-controlled uh, HUD, so that's a head-up display, which is unique to Ubuntu and makes it fast and easy to do things. Um, on touch devices and transforms touch interface with rich applications and bringing all the power of the PC to your tablet. Um, edge magic um, for cleaner apps. So it's essentially you are using the screen edges to kind of navigate between the apps. You just swipe to the right and you see all your apps that you have um, you have available to to, um, to access. So there's no physical buttons or anything like that. Um, kind of like how uh, the playbook. Yeah, I was gonna say very Q and X in that in that regard, yep. and then and then a lot of other uh, you know a lot of other things like you know um, they're, they're gonna focus on uh, you know have good focus on content. Media is gonna be very neatly presented on uh, you know customizable home screens, and you can like kind of sort your own different sources, whether it be you know S uh, RSS feeds or video and pictures, like all. All on the on the front screen, so that might sound very Android-like, but this is supposed to be like Android on steroids and a lot more cleaned up. So mm -hmm. I'm very excited for that. Um, and so I don't know. I'm not a developer, and I know Rad is, and I don't know if you have an extra Nexus 10 or Nexus 7 to mess around with. But I'd be excited to see if you can get your hands on one to mess mess with this. And it's free to download for for developers, so um, it, it'd be kind of cool to see. But if you don't have a Nexus 7 or a Nexus 10 and you do have a Nexus 4 or a Galaxy Nexus from last year, Ubuntu, <laughs> a lot of Nexus, Ubuntu is going to be launching the Touch Developer Preview on February 21st, which is right about the time of Mobile World Congress. Mm -hmm. And so if you go to Mobile World Congress in Barcelona, 
uh, which unfortunately we won't be at, but we will be following as best as we can. Uh, there will be Ubuntu or Canical reps there to flash your phone and ROM your phone right there and then for you. And uh, yeah, uh, again, it'll be free to test it out, and you can kind of see how the uh, Ubuntu interface is going to work on your phone. Now, I'll be honest with you: if you have the Galaxy Nexus, it's going to be slow. It just it's going to be slow. A year ago, it would have been fast, you know. But now we <laughs> expect now we expect quad core processing and this and that and that and this. And so, if if you have a Nexus Four and you can spare um, the Nexus Four to put Ubuntu on it, try it out. You know, it'd be, it's going to be a fairly cool uh, experience. I would I would say. And, um, yeah, Rad, do you have anything else that you want to mention? No, no, we, it's pretty much the same stuff that I was mentioning, uh, I guess, yesterday with, with Victor. I mean, Victor kind of nailed it when he said that it's probably going to be somewhat niche, you know, for uh, the fact that people want to do whatever they want with their phone or whatnot, you know, and make changes. Uh, and, uh, you know, basically mod heads were just like, you know, I want to do this on my PC. Would you be more like that? I mean, people who use Ubuntu are different flavors of Linux. There's like literally 35 flavors of Linux out there. And there's probably variations of those. You know, you've got Red Hat, there's even versions of Red Hat that people use. Uh, but I see the Ubuntu person downloading this into their Android and saying, look what I did with my phone. You know, yeah. check this out. And um, uh, it is, it'll be interesting to see how this installs on a variety of Android devices. So mm -hmm. we'll see. It'll be cool. It's interesting that you know, the general public might start, uh, what, what am I looking for, embracing the hacker, in a sense, as, as, long, as, you do it, as long as you do it for good, you know what I'm saying? The, 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 um, you know, well, they're going to be doing whatever they want. I mean, the, the whole <laughs> um, the Android ROM scene is huge, right? So, yeah. like, right, that... but it's still, it, 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 I, don't, I, wouldn't, I don't know, like, if you right out of the gate, you explain that this is not... I don't know. I don't know how I'm trying to say my. There point. are thousands. I mean, I would go through those. You know, Android developers also have those like sub, you know, uh, those subcultures where people are just modding the hell out of Android, right? Right. And of course, you know, those OEMs try to lock that version of Android as much as they can on their on their phone. Ubuntu seems like that area where people are like, do whatever you want. Mm -hmm. You bring that in. You make your changes or yeah. whatnot, and we're not, you know, no one from Google or Samsung I mean, will yell at you for doing it. Or yeah. a carrier. Yeah, so, at the same time, allow give you a starting point that's actually has a good looking UI and something good that way so you can get started into something that's actually somewhat functional too. So right. they're providing that service with a functional startup, which is a great idea. Yeah. I There's really only like one thing that I have and this is what developers are fearing about open source is that when you make Ubuntu you and you make it open, anyone can make their own version. Because it's a, it's a, it's basically a general public license. So when you make another version, you can say, "Here's Ubuntu, my version, Red Ubuntu," and then someone can like spread that around, you know, from their own UI. So it's just a matter of how how closely uh, uh, the uh, Canonical can make that uh, make the operating system like tight enough, or maybe flexible enough, but not so much that people are going to get annoyed for you know different versions of it. <laughs> what so. if they were to do something as simple as you have to get your version certified to be able to put it out through a, the conical... A, a it doesn't ROM. work that way. That's the difference with, uh, with open source, is that open source, once you have the... Once you download it, it's completely open. You can modify whatever you want. No, I understand that, but like distributing it. Like the way that you're ma making it sound, like if I were to make a Tony Ubuntu, Right. And I were to go off and sell Tony Ubuntu phones, and mm -hmm. you were to sell Ubuntu Ubuntu phones, mm -hmm. um, there'd be that kind of inner conflict, that 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 competition with already kind of within. But Ubuntu. that's the way it is. So, like, if in I mean, the is, open isn't that how Android is, though? I mean, yeah, I mean, but that's right. But there's a there's a general guidelines of how Android's created, and since Google backs it, they have these set general guidelines that they say this is what you have to do. They can literally do anything they want with Android. That's why we see consoles, and that's why we see you know CV t STVs and uh, TV STVs and stuff like that. But um, with Ubuntu, they're trying to make it somewhat less flexible. But I don't think that's going to happen. That's what developers are saying right now. Is that you know, we just hope this doesn't get too crazy like the way Linux is right now. So, 
all yeah. the, all this is is like an outlet for mobile manufacturers exactly. and tablet manufacturers yeah. that have Linux on their setup. It's like the same small the same small percentage of humans who like to do Linux on their PCs are going to do Ubuntu on their phones. This is going to be the same percentage. Most people are going to ignore it. A small segment of the population will embrace it. And either way, it's going to be its own little ecosystem world within itself sitting there. Yeah, I, that's how I see it too. I yeah. think it's going to be like a community based thing, right? Like people mm -hmm. are going to get together and they're going to. Say, look what I did with this this UI, or look what I did over here, and you're like, hey, can I download that? You know, and so they'll make variations of it, and then, you know, I'm assuming that there's probably going to be, you know, skins for, you know, for Ubuntu, and you know, so people can change their lock screens and stuff like that, sure. which you can do. Right. So, um, do you think at this point, though? I mean, it looks like Conical is so much more further ahead than HP is with Open Web OS. Do you think yeah. that that HP's going to care any more about the fact that they they bought that that they they still have that mobile open web OS available to them or, or are they going to or are they going to kind of just you know put it put it off to the side i think it's going to be put off to the side mostly because uh, you know that i feel like that brand was kind of tarnished the other difference too is that you cannot install web os into other devices and that's the big difference so i mean it's mostly going to be on hp based types of devices and Ubuntu is like allowing you to install onto these particulars, you know, like it has to have this chipset, like so it's going to have needs Snapdragon or Tegra Four I or this or that, and then mm -hmm. I mean that's pretty much a very small requirement to have, you know. And you, I mean, WebOS is different. Like there's no documentation on like what to install into or what requirements you need. So um, I think they're just leaving it open. Here's some HP devices that are out there. Here's some stuff you can mess around with. But I think that's the DOA. Or just the dead. <laughs> so um, it's kind of sad, but I mean, that's just kind of the gist of it. Well, if any of you have an, uh, an Ubuntu developer account, or if you're planning on getting an Ubuntu on your devices, please let us know at lazytechguys.com. Comments at lazytechguys.com. We're going to go ahead and move on to the game stick. Now, Sean, this was actually a pretty cool th um, project that was on Kickstarter, and it was another Android powered uh, gaming console controller kind of thing, my Bob, uh, which <laughs> went, up, went which went up against the Ouya, and it's only eighty bucks versus the Ouya, which I believe is ninety or hundred something till. Uh -huh. Hundred dollars, yeah, well, twenty dollars, so Lord, dude, I mm -mm, screw this crap. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Look, all I know is this: this is a pretty cool idea. It's for it has a controller that reminds me of a 360 controller with the way they put the joysticks, but at the same time, it's an eighty dollars solution that's completely wireless that allows you to pretty much take this dongle-like stick, stick it in the back of an HDMI port on the back of your TV, and give you access to Android-based video games with this controller for eighty bucks. It's kind of hard to knock something like that. It's just one of those things that's, I mean, in a way, and I'm sure, Rad, you can agree with me on this, and we'll probably talk about it this week, well, this week on the Lords, but the, um, it's just sort of like it's bringing down the price tier and the ability for people who didn't have the ability to make games to be able to get their games out on the market and on consoles that people will finally be able to enjoy without having to go to Microsoft, Sony, or Nintendo for this capability. Mm -hmm. Yet at the same time, I don't see this being of something that's going to completely disrupt everything Sony I and agree. Microsoft do because those guys are a little... It's sort of To me, it's this equivalent of a major record label and independent record labels. This is going to be the equivalent of like an independent like record label and the other one will be then Sony and Microsoft will still be the major labels who will never go away. But mm. honestly, for eighty bucks, this thing is available for pre-order. You go to their website, you come to our site, you'll find the link to it, and it'll give you a, a pre-order. I mean, a pre-order option through Amazon. It's only eighty bucks. Spec-wise, it gives you just so you guys know, uh, one gigabyte of M kernel memory, eight gigabytes of flash memory. It has uh, runs Android games on there, and it's four point two Wi-Fi connection, uh, Bluetooth, a full ten eighty uh, p HD streaming, and it can support iOS and Android devices as controllers as well as the little one that it comes with. Now, the model number, it says white in particular, so I have a feeling this is probably going to be the first model. They might have a black one in the future, and never know. They may even go purple, yellow, and maybe neon green. That way it match your reference there, Red. <laughs> so, I like this. It's a pretty cool idea. It's 80 bucks. Go ahead and check it out. Take a look at it and see if this is of interest to you. So. Mapping. I want to see mapping. I want to see how the controller mapping. Yeah, that's what I was yeah. thinking, too. Thank you. That's the I, only thing I worry about Android games big time. Yeah, We've talked about this all the time. time. How are we going to get the control? Anyway, let it go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, um, well, thank you very much for that, Sean. We're going to go ahead and take a break and thank our first sponsor. But before we do that, I just want to say, hi, Jarrell. Hi, thanks for watching. Um, <laughs> I think he's, he's watching right it's now. It's on Twitter. 
Hey. hey. Bug hey. nuts. Something about right. a twit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I twit. Um, let's go ahead and thank Dyn.com. Uh, if you are in need of extremely fast as well as reliable DNS service, then look no further than Dyn. Dyn.com, their whole thing is uptime is the bottom line. They have features like load balancing, global traffic management, and active failover, which essentially means Dyn will keep your site up and running. It won't fail, no gateway problems, none of that garbage. Um, depending on what package that you buy, especially if you you know uh, get the more expensive ones, um, you have access to remote DVRs, webcams, and other things of that nature, and you can even get your own domain name. So again, that's Dyn.com, D-Y-N, to get faster internet by using um, you know by, uh, for uh, get faster internet by using uh, Dyn for DNS. And what you are going to get from us, LazyTechGuys.com. And with Dyn is an awesome offer. If you go to Dyn.com slash podcast30, that's podcast30, you fill out the contact form and say that you heard this on uh, LazyTechGuys.com. You start shopping right away and you save 30% just by using the promo code podcast30 at checkout. Again, visit Dyn.com slash podcast30 to get your 30% off. And we thank them for being sponsors of the Wireless Weekly as well as the full LTG network. Now, um, we're running a little bit behind time, so we are going to skip ahead. We're going to turn the mic back over to Mr. Sean Wilburn. He's going to talk about something that's pretty cool. It's a, it's a kind of a, um, a marriage between a device and an app, and this is Belkin's Wemo. And uh, they, they've, there's been a, an iOS app, um, but now Android is getting into the mix. So, Sean? So, just so everybody knows, it's Wii, W-E-M-O, not Wii like Nintendo Wii. Or a Wiimote. So this is a really cool device. That they, it's sort of like those devices you put in between your uh, light, your uh, lamp and your outlet that allows you to con- turn on and off your lights. Now this one allows you to control it via an app. So you pretty much you buy a bunch of these, you put it throughout your house in different positions, and then at the touch of a button, you can turn on and off your lights remotely. It also has a motion sensor option that's available so that if you want, you could just set it in a room. And the way they described it, the way they showed it off in a video was if you have kids, the kids can run in the room, the lights will come on. And they don't have to worry about whether they turn the lights on, it's just going to come on automatically. And then the other one is they showed off was, well, the magician where they're showing like the wife here in a video where she's turning on or off the lights and they're tricking the kids to showing, look, that is magic. But it's just a really cool way of remotely turning, accessing your light, turning them on or off. And honestly, this seems to be the first step to future, to in the future, having these things integrated in our devices. I mean, we already saw the refrigerator at CES, and that's just step one. I can see 10 years from now, our, all the lamps you buy will have integrated like uh, Wi-Fi, integrated Android access, and then we'll be able to turn them off remotely. So this is a good way to take all your legacy lamps and the stuff we have today and control it via, well, your app. It's pretty cool. I actually like it a lot. So. One thing that one thing I really like about it is um, that the actual device that plugs into the wall it doesn't look too big. It, it looks like you could still fit other plugs, and it, it looks kind of nice. That, so even if you can't hide it, and people were, were to walk by, it doesn't look like this ugly thing that's plugged into the wall. Mm-hmm. And then two, there's no professional installation that's needed. Mm-hmm. A lot of these things are going to come out. Um, now Google promised, you know, Android at home with LTE and all this kind of home automation. A lot of that stuff. Most likely is going to require some uh, professional installation. Uh, we actually talked about um, this Wi-Fi enabled light bulb that you can put into any light, um, but it's you know uh, some some of those things you, you need a contractor to come out to redo. So this is cool, I think. Um, yeah. Oh, there's a baby monitor too. That's also pretty awesome. Yeah, that's also yeah. Pro- you know baby monitor. Uh, you also mentioned the motion detector. Yep. And so yeah, now it's on Android, but it's still beta. So right. yeah. you got some prices here just because this is my biggest thing, prices. All right, so this is what they're charging for this thing. Belkin is charging for the basic switch, which is one outlet, 50 bucks. If you're talking for the baby monitor, it's $90, and for the motion, it's $60. Now, these are probably retails. I don't know if these are street prices. You might be able to get it on sale if you go to the websites or if you go to the companies at the right moment, but that's about what you're looking to spend. And, um, well, I guess safety at home and... And maybe if you team this up with one of those apps that allow you to uh, control, like, the do your security remotely from your like a remote location to see who's walking into your house. Man. There was there was uh, one example that they had was uh, for for women who have um, 
hair straighteners and things like that. Mm-hmm. You know, if you forget to turn that off, your house might burn down. So oh, yeah. you have it plugged into one of those things. Uh, you know, if you're over Wi-Fi or cellular, you just boop, turn off, no problem, you're good. Or by the way, with the auto shut off feature. Or that. You can do that too. <laughs> you doofus. Hey, I'm just saying. Come no, on. No, you're right. You're right. You're right. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Mm-hmm. Just, you had to take the fun out of it. Okay, cool. Um, another uh, kind of device that is um, app uh, marrying to a, an accessory is the new Smart Fitty watch. Fitty, yeah. Fitty. Smart Fitty watch, <laughs> which is the it's world's first. I'm going to party like this. It's the fir- world's first smart um, <laughs> world's first smartwatch that actually measures and tracks your health. So, Rad, did you get a chance to uh, to yeah. take a look at this thing? I did. I got. I was actually kind of interested in it. Uh, it's kind of like a new type of watch that um, blends fitness tracking with um, smart features like email and text messaging, and uh, they just launched the crowdsourcing on on Indiegogo. And uh, so basically what they're trying to do is uh, build an activity tracker and it has basically the whole concept with what they're trying to do uh, is try to not notify you of, you know, all the stuff aside, you know, that you would normally see on the smartphone at some, you know, certain level. And uh, the watch would also help you to track your sleep patterns, um, check your Twitter or Facebook updates. Um, and uh, in terms of design and interface, smart. Fitty <laughs> would use a touch screen watch uh, a touch screen watch UI that links to your Android or iOS device uh, on a variety of other uh, other abilities. And so, um, while it's still kind of much in the drawing board at the moment, uh, the creators uh, Romeo Mendoza and uh, Megan Sadio are turning to the crowdsourcing in order to secure an investment. And uh, hopefully, by the time they get it done, they're going to get you know. Uh, this all cleaned up and hopefully get to the point where we're going to have unlimited app possibilities at the smartphone level. Now, mind you, there are other uh, competitors in this space, although not really doing fitness. There are also doing smartphone-like features in, in the watch-like, you know, uh, area. iWatch for being one of them. But uh, for the most part, uh, these guys are doing something a little bit more fashionable. You would, you know, arguably, um, and there's going to be different versions for both men and women and uh, mostly kind of more or less uh, aesthetic than it is function-wise. But uh, uh, if you check out the Indiegogo site, they have different perks. You could have different straps for your phones and stuff like that. But uh, for those who are probably interested in the stuff that you can do, here's some of the specs. Um, you have an e-paper display, so it uses actually a very flexible display that's using like e-ink, you know, in a sense. It's high resolution. As a curved LCD screen, superior readability, I'm good at writing bullet points, precision motion sensor, backlight, ambient light sensor, and even has an accelerometer and the battery is good for seven days. So that's actually pretty cool. Uh, the Bluetooth is a little bit on the older side. Uh, well, actually, no, take that back. It does say 2.1 all the way up to 4.0 and compatible with all the iOS versions up to 6, as well as uh, Android ver- uh, devices going all the way down to 2.3. Hmm. So, um, but yeah, it's pretty cool and it's water resistant. So that's pretty cool, too. Um, of course, this is still in the makings, uh, but if anyone is interested in, in investing into it or wanting to be a backer, to get an actual product, you would start with $125 you know, to get an actual product. So, um, And if you, you put in 140 you get any one of your choice, which is basically, uh, I think, different colors as well as, I think, the straps. But, uh, yeah, and if you want to get two of them, 240 to get to. So, yeah, it's been pretty cool. One feature I really like about this is um, it has a built-in SOS button for emergency channels. So if you get, I don't know, locked to, uh, if you get in a situation where you're not able to make a phone call and your phone is still working and the watch is still connected to the phone, you hit your kind of a Dick Tracy move. You, you hit your, your phone, you hit your watch and it sends a signal to uh, predetermined emergency contacts like your your mother or you know your wife or whoever, um, and uh, in the police and you know they will find you via your GPS location and hopefully help you out. So that's kind of cool. Um, yeah, right now <laughs> if, if Who's Dick Tracy, not kidding. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> right now, if you um, if you want to get the watch, the <laughs> if you want to get the watch, they they have forty four days left in the in the Indiegogo. Um, 
project, and mm -hmm. they have only they're a little under three thousand dollars raised, and they need to hit a hundred thousand dollars to reach their goal, at least to get this project up and running with the Indiegogo project. So I'm not exactly sure what's going to happen if it doesn't come to fruition with Indiegogo. I hope it does because this is actually a pretty cool idea. This is the first watch, like I said in the beginning, the first watch that I've seen that actually will track your health. All the other watches will help you tweet, you know, check into Facebook, even snap a picture if you need Your it. social but health. But not <laughs> that's, that's very different kind of health. This How one, many miles I ran today? Yeah. <laughs> this, this is actually, you know, because so, I see a lot of my friends, I feel it's like such a fat slob because I see a lot of my friends on Facebook and Instagram taking pictures of their, their Nike Fit you know their um, the the route that they ran today and like, look how many calories I lost like god, god darn it I'm not doing anything let me get like <laughs> and they're really <laughs> under exercise bike per well whatever hour. whatever it is they're, they're getting more exercise than I am but the fact of the matter is this is, actually, this is actually pretty <laughs> cool this is actually a pretty cool calories. idea so I hope uh, I I hope it does come to fruition I, I want I, that shirt that's I what wish I want the best. I want the shirt that dude is wearing. That's a pretty spiffy looking shirt. I ain't gonna lie. I'm looking at that like that watch and that shirt go hand in hand together. So yeah, I, I'm envious. I want to be this guy. All but right. you know who else I want to be? A Nokia user because if you have Nokia phones, guess what? You got free music. Anyway, check it out. So Nokia launched a new subscription service called Nikio, Nokia Music Plus, which is an upgrade from their standard Nokia Music, which is free. For the new for Lumia users, so whereas the basic service gives you uh, is advertisement free, no subscription. You pretty much get to make mixes of your artists, and you even get to listen to <laughs> professional mixes by musicologists, which is a great term, and uh, independent artists. Then and you know it's online, offline use. So now for four dollars a month. Lumia users now can have access to access to unlimited downloads for offline use. Unlimited skips, meaning you can just skip these songs you don't want to hear. You can actually get better sound quality, which means they're going to be streaming at a buyer, higher bit rate. Um, you also have multiple device use via the web, and you even get access to streaming for some of the songs. So it's $4 a month. If you're a Lumia user, go ahead and check it out. It just got switched on in the United States, and you might dig it. It might be pretty cool. You might... And just so you know, I'm a big fan of streaming music now. I've gotten to the point where I am a huge fan of it. So if you haven't already started doing this or if you are a person who used to buy a huge library of stuff and you don't buy music the way you used to, at least check out this service if you're a Lumia user or if you're other users. Check out like the Spotify's, the RDOs, one of those services and just check them in. I think you might find a pretty cool service in there that has some features that you just might dig. So anyway, if you're Nokia Music Plus, it's out. Check it out. Sweet. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Well, thank you very much for that, Sean. Um, mm -hmm. The last thing that we want to touch on is something that Rad had a chance to play around with, which is the Samsung Ative Odyssey for Verizon Wireless. Now, um, Rad, I know you Maybe have, I, I know you have a, um, a Windows 8 phone right now with um, with the Nokia, what the 810 is it? Mm -hmm. um, what was your thought on the Samsung's budget? Uh, phone version of, of Windows 8. Um, I think it's uh, it's a uh, it's competitive, but I think it's uh, somewhat wrongly priced for what other phones can do. It's uh, I mean, mind you, it's, Windows Phone is is still going through an uphill battle, and you're battling against this huge you know army of Android phones, even at the base level, and. Um, it's it's a good entry phone, but it's really hard to say that that you can recommend it when you can see all these other higher spec phones at the same price or at the same range. Rufet, what's the price? Something. What is the price? Just Fifty so bucks. Know. Thank you. Go. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, you know, uh, there's another similar phone that's actually higher in spec and um, provides a little bit more features and more exclusive apps to it that is free and it's on the same carrier. And it's a Windows phone if those who want to stick around with that operating system. But for those who are, you know, wanting to stick with Android or thinking of going to Windows phone, there are Android alternatives that are, are somewhat better for the buck. There's some that are even free that are ice cream sandwich. You know what I mean? And, uh, I mean, against I mean against gingerbread, you know how much I hate gingerbread. And it's, yeah, it's just, you know, whatever. But this, when you have... Like sweets. Got it, all right. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's one of those things like where... Uh, like, okay, this has a 5 megapixel camera, and you have these other uh, Android phones, which I got a chance to check out, too, which are very good phones. Even the Galaxy S2, I mean, is comparable to this. You know, um, 
I mean, it's 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 uh, you know a mile better, you know. And so for that for Windows, the cool thing about this kind of budget phone is that for those who are just kind of jumping in, coming from BlackBerry or whatnot, it's a good phone. But it's hard for me to recommend when there's free ones that are that have a higher spec that are probably have better value, a better app store. Um, and better exclusive apps. And if you, there are people who are sticking with Windows Phone, you know, it's that's probably better. It's hard even to recommend this over an iPhone 4S when it's just another fifty dollars more to get an iPhone 4S. So, um, but yeah, it's 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 somewhat a knock. But the screen size itself is is not that much bigger than than the iPhone 4S. And and some of the bigger screen, I, I you know, Android phones are, you know, are better spec. You know, they have these other uh, even even Samsung's own devices like their own Gal their Galaxy S2 is still a very viable choice to have nowadays. I mean, you have a, a, a bigger class of, of apps available for you. So um, unless you're a really diehard Windows Phone or Samsung and Windows Phone fan together, it's no you know, I don't <laughs> think you know what I mean. You, there's you got the Nokia 822, and then you got for another 50 bucks you got the HTC 8X, which is you know widely acclaimed as like the Windows Phone right now to get. Um, and then, you, of course, if you're on AT and T, you have the 920 and all these other guys. And they're at 100 dollars, so for 50 dollars more, you're getting way more for your money, mm. as opposed to just, you know, here's 50 bucks for something that is sort of okay. This is a budget phone. When you pay another 50 bucks for, you know, this is not that bad. You know what I mean? 100 bucks for like all of this pure view, eight megabit pixel, you know, steady cam, crazy ISO performance for a 920, and then you have uh, the HTC 8X, which blows away this. For, addi for additional 50 bucks. So, um, do you think this is going to be a phone that's going to end up being uh, free or given away in a very short time and with plans? Yeah, I, I used to almost sometimes think that Verizon made a mistake. Like, here's the funny thing, too. Like, if you go to Verizon's website, they have the HTC Trophy, which is, you know, a Windows Phone 7 phone, and they mark that as a $179, $179 phone. A Windows Phone 7 phone, and it's $179. So, it's like no one's going to get that, obviously. And I don't know if it's just a psychological thing to put that next to, you know, the Samsung to say, oh, okay, this looks like a better value phone. Here's something that's old. Here's something that's new. But uh, if there's one good thing that I like about this is, of course, with Windows Phone, you know, there's uh, there's less there's less fat because there's less legacy apps to support. And you know, on a budget phone, it's com it's very smooth. You know, I mean, uh, you can expect the same experience that you would expect from you know, Windows phones that are similar in price, and I'm talking Windows Phone 8 as opposed to 7, um, but uh, it's hard to recommend when there are other similar price phones, even on the Android and iOS side, where you could just spend an extra 50 bucks or even free, you know, to, to get what you want. Even the iPhone 4 is still comparable because you have all those apps. So, and an 8 megapixel camera, and this and this and that, minus the LTE. So, but it's, it's a, uh, um, yeah, I, I when I reviewed it, I was like, you know, I can't review this in the bubble as much as I like Microsoft. But at the same time, it's it's one of those things where it's just like, you know, there's other phones that are, are better. I mean, there's just no doubt about it. But uh, that might as well just get the, if anything, get the E22. So, sorry, Samsung. I know you don't want to hear that, but... Who came out first with the announcement? Was it Samsung's native Odyssey or with Micro... Yeah. Or, um, Actually, the or, funny or, thing is... Or Nokia. Uh, uh, both, both. So what? Funny thing is, Samsung came out with the A2S, which is basically a Windows Phone version of the Galaxy S3. Now that's not here in the states, which I was hoping that they'd bring here, but they didn't. So they instead brought this, which is so weird. Like they just like <laughs> I love like how you it, said it. Yeah, they I'm brought like, this. Yeah, that, yeah. that sounds more like a carrier decision. Like we don't. We the Galaxy S3 is selling so well, we don't want to disrupt those sales for that. So exactly. We not we don't want to confuse them. Phone? That's exactly yeah. what I thought. Yeah. yeah, that's what it sounds like to me. Yeah, it's like oh, Galaxy these because they're using exactly the same body, the HFS, and that's sold in the UK and, and other parts of the world except in the United States. So you know, people aren't confused all over except over here apparently. Yeah. Um, but well, remember um, we can't tell a phone with rounded edges. From the <laughs> middle, so we, right. try we deserve it. That's right. <laughs> right. Yeah. Sorry, man. Can't defend. Can't defend us on that one. <laughs> it's yeah. a run around. Anyway, so, well, so, you, Rad, so did you like the phone? I mean, just or it just seemed like it was okay, just not really. It's a decent phone, but it's not something I can rec I can't recommend. Uh, you know, knowing that there's other phones that are out there, you know, 
I mean, I could say, oh, I like it, but then if I were introduced to these other phones, which I were, it's like, well, how does this, how is this any better, you know, with something that's free? You go on and you, you look at the, like, the HTC One X, uh, and you're like, wow, this is a pretty darn good phone. It's a 4.7 inches, it's this, it's ice cream sandwich, you know, mm-hmm. and it has an 8 megapixel phone, an 8 megapixel camera, and it has ISO performance, and it's like, so how do you, how do you beat that? And it's free, or it's 20 bucks, or whatever. So, mm-hmm. um, it's difficult, so yeah. and it doesn't look that. I mean, personally speaking, it, it's really hard when you put it next to the phones. I don't know if you've seen our review, but I laid it uh, next to all the other phones I have, including Android, uh, and it's not even an Android phone; it's an Android Galaxy Player, and it's like the odd man out because it looks like a BlackBerry. <laughs> so, um, but other than that, um, <laughs> even the Blackberries don't look like that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> At least not this one or the. You know, he's good friends with the Q, the Q10, but mm. I don't know. We'll see. Phone on fire. Yeah, maybe they will make it free. Yeah, mm-hmm. that would be well, a good thing then. Well, Rad, I have to say, you did a one bang up job of a of a review, and you set the bar mm. really, really high for me. So thanks. But yeah. uh, if you go to the review that Rad did, uh, he's got a bunch of sample pictures, sample video. He even has a video. Uh, a gameplay video of a game called uh, something that he calls Guns for game. Hire. That one. That's the Which game. Which you could get on Android too. That's an excellent game, by the way. It's and a fun it's game. It, 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 it is right a fun now. game. That's <laughs> 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 getting <laughs> guns for. I was looking at that game you were playing. I was like, what? It's oh, all right. What is? That? I gotta ask him about that later. Yeah, so. You know, I don't play the crap, dude. I play the good stuff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, speaking of games, real fast, uh, an, a game I just want to point out real quick that I just realized was on Android that I missed out on. Well, it's on all more Android devices. So Zen Pinball. You now they had it before. It was limited to certain processors. Yeah. Well, it's it's on HD now, meaning that it's everywhere. And you yep. anybody with a, an Android phone can download it. They give and them, tablet and tablet. Mm-hmm. That's right, as well as the standard PS Mac App Store. Uh, it's on um, all these different app stores. So guys, if you haven't really checked it out, it's called Zen Pinball. They have a table for free that's called the Sorcerer's Lair table. Pretty cool deal. It's an awesome table. I you know, and it's a pretty very very cool program. So yeah, Zen Pinball on and on mobile devices. I don't know if they got mobile yet, but yeah, there it is. For people watching it, there it is. Zimp of all, a list of tables. Ah. Oh, man. There's so many like mobile games I've been messing around with now. It's pretty cool. I even got a chance to take a, check out Real Racing, too. Uh, uh, Tony, it's a good stuff, man. The third version. Dude, oh, so wait, awesome. Big news. Oh, biggest news. What do you mean you got to check? Che- you ha- the third version's not out yet. No. Which one? Oh, no, well, then I didn't play it. Then I must have played another version. <laughs> Real Racing. But, uh, that, one, that one's out next it, week. It was a knockoff called Real Racing with two <laughs> R-E-E-L. <laughs> there's a fish. Um, <laughs> You're racing fish. Oh, there's some other games too that are pretty cool, like uh, Beat Sneak Bandit, and um, and that's on iOS. Um, and uh, what's the other one? I think Horn. And but yeah, a lot of good stuff on 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 iOS. Here it is. Zen Pinball Star Trek tables, guys. They're happening very Ooh. soon. Ooh, the Star Trek okay. tables are coming out. I saw an email for this earlier today. I think they're coming out in a couple weeks or before. With, in a, with TNG it, or uh, everybody, like or TOS, everyone. Okay. What do you mean TOS? All TNG, right. The next, no, no, no. It's the first three tables that they're going to do, but they're coming out very soon, if I remember right, on mobile. De- so yeah, it's on on the iOS platform. They're they're coming out as a separate app, and um, it's going to be called. Zit, oh, Star Wars Pinball. So I think in a couple weeks, look for Star, <laughs> yeah, they're really called it. It's a different app. It's not yeah. under Zen Pinball. But look for Star Wars Pinball. You'll find it on that. That's and keep your eyes open. By Zen Studios. Yeah. Same guys. Oh. And it's the same pinball tables that are going to be on the PS3 and the 360 very shortly. Mm. So yeah, keep your eyes open. It's pretty awesome. Well, yeah. speaking about the PS3 or PS anything, Sony has their press announcement tomorrow. tomorrow. So I don't. I personally, that's not my bag. That's you both. So um, we will try to uh, cover that to the best of our abilities, and we um, will we'll definitely give our thoughts and our qualms and issues and happiness on the Lords of Gaming podcast on Thursday nights, uh, which will be published on Friday morning. Um, for the the uh, Wireless Weekly, I really appreciate everyone listening and watching and uh, doing whatever you do while you listen to us rant and talk. Uh, Sean, if you'd like to uh, plug away, uh, let us know. All right, just uh, standard stuff for the uh, standard stuff for myself. Uh, LTG Sean for Twitter. Also, you can f- uh, look me up on Lazy Tech Guys. Just or 
email comments at lazytechguys.com. And by the way, that pinball game comes out next week. Next week from when you're listening to this. Very soon. So anyway. So yeah, come check me out. And also, if you are an independent artist or if you know one, definitely give them a heads up about our show and um, we'll help, you know, get a little promotion out there for your music. Thank you, Sean. Rad? Cool. Uh, you can find me at Radford at LazyTechGuys.com and you can find me at Twitter and Facebook at Rad Castro. And you can find me on Twitter at LTG Tony, or you can uh, contact me directly on about.me slash tninja3000. We'd like to thank our sponsors, audible.com. Get your free audiobook at audible.com forward slash lazy. Also, dine, dine.com slash podcast30. Get 30% off your DNS needs. Uptime is the bottom line. And to contact the whole team, call, uh, call us at 707-722-5299 or email us at comments at lazytechguys.com. And as I mentioned, we're on Facebook, Twitter, Google+, Plus, and of course here on YouTube.com, uh, Lazy Tech TV. We are uh, on pretty much every single podcast catalog and um, uh, system that you can think of. But if you use a podcast app and you can't find us, you know, let us know at comments at lazytechguys.com. Good luck to everyone who's trying to win that darn little hat on, um, on our giveaway. And that's pretty much it. Thank you. Have a good one. Good night. We're out.